So it's no secret. I'm sort of a Spider-Man cosplay professional. I've been making masks, costumes, and all kinds of Spider-Man props. And a lot of people want to know how to make the stuff I do. But I've been too lazy to craft a video about how to make your own costume. So I figured I could start you guys off at the same place I started to make my own stuff at. Because today, I'm going to show you how to make your very own Spider-Man masks. The most important part of any Spider-Man mask is the lens. What you're going to need to make the lenses are craft foam, black Plasti Dip spray, PC fan mesh, white spray paint, scissors, and Gorilla Glue. Step 1. Look around. Find what you want to make. Is there a Spider-Man or mask design you enjoy? Recreate it. Get several reference images of it. Maybe print it out or sketch out a reference sheet so you can have pictures of what you want to make near you at all times as you work. I find that looking at concept art from all kinds of Spider-Man projects can be untapped gold mines for potential. Sometimes. I definitely recommend scrolling through Pinterest after looking up Spider-Man masks. Damn, some f***ing thunder just went down, bro. I'm... Um, damn. You could always just make your favorite version of the classic suit mask. The classic suit never looks exactly the same in every appearance it makes. Why not make your favorite classic suit mask? You could make the mask from Spider-Man Edge of Time, the PS4 video game, Suit Pita Man, Into the Spider-Verse, or you can even make a mask based off of one of your favorite comic artists version of Spider-Man. Or maybe just design your own mask and lenses. Step 2. Get that craft foam I told you to get in a piece of paper. Draw out your lenses over this piece of paper and make sure you get them exactly right. If you mess up, don't throw the whole paper away. Just make sure you cut out your proper version when you cut out your paper lenses. Now, proceed to cut out your paper lens. This paper lens will work as a template for cutting out your lenses out of the foam. And th damn! God damn! Sorry, it is thundering out. It is thundering so hard outside. Jesus Christ. I'm, no, because I'm pretty sure that just hit the preschool across the street. I'm not even playing. Hold on. Okay, now where were we? This paper lens will work as a template for cutting your lenses out of the foam, and they are completely reusable. This technique allowed me to make this mask four separate times over the course of a year after the paint kept cracking. Now trace out the paper lens over the foam with a sharpie, preferably one of those fat ass ones with the metal casing. Now once you trace your lenses out, cut the lenses out of the foam, including the inside where the mesh is supposed to be. Keep the foam piece you just cut out. Keeping this piece will be important for making appropriately sized mesh slots for your eyes to see through. Now for the dip. Step 3. Take your lenses and your PC fan mesh that you bought from Amazon, because you knew immediately to go to Amazon when confronted with the question of, where do I buy PC fan mesh? And you didn't run to the comments to ask where you could buy them, like a good viewer, because you're independent and you're good at thinking on your feet. Good job, viewer. You're going to take your Plasti Dip and coat your foam lenses in a few coats of Plasti Dip. Don't spray it on too heavy or else it'll stick to whatever it's drying on. Now spray paint your PC fan mesh white, but be very careful because if you spray on too heavy, you'll drown the mesh and fill the holes you're supposed to see out of. Then wait a few hours for your stuff to dry while you go look at my friend Trey's TikTok. He's like the Miles Morales to my Peter Parker. Check out both of his accounts to see his super cool Atlanta Spider-Man suit we worked on together, and much more. Step 4. Now that your lenses of mesh have dried, take them back inside to your little loser-ass computer desk, because you don't have a real desk, and go find those little lens slots you cut out from earlier, because you definitely didn't throw them away like I told you not to. Then trace the lens slots out over your painted fan mesh, and make sure you leave a little under a centimeter of space between your foam slots and your traced lines. Make two of these, but make sure you flip the slots for each lens so that they are mirrored to match each lens. Now flip your lenses over to the back. The back part should be the part that you didn't spray paint. Now take your cutout piece of mesh and flip that so that the back part is facing you too, and that part should also be the part you didn't spray paint. And glue it to the back of the lenses so that the unpainted part is facing you. Do this for both lenses. The glue will start to bubble up between the mesh. Just make sure that you smooth it down with the cap of your Gorilla Glue. This will actually strengthen the borders of your mesh. And now, you have your lenses. So, uh, you have your lenses now. Now to make the mask. Or, for the small percent of you who are lazy and have a credit card, you can buy a mask from Amazon. 
Skip to this time code since you won't have to make it and can get straight to gluing your lenses. But for those of you who already begged your parents to buy materials and didn't expect to have to buy spandex, you're gonna have to rip up one of your old t-shirts for this part. You will need one half yard of spandex fabric, measuring tape, needle and thread, or fabric glue, fabric scissors, pins, and a foam mannequin head. So I'm gonna show you a little secret, okay? Keep this between us. This is my mask pattern. It's made for someone with a head circumference of 22 inches. I've drawn out these measurements so you can recreate the template yourself. If your head circumference is an inch or two bigger than mine, be sure to add on an inch or two to these two measurements I've circled on screen. I'm not sure if that'll fix the problem since I'm not a pattern making master, but it is my best guess. So take your fabric and fold it in half big enough to cover the width of the pattern. Then trace the pattern onto your fabric and pin it down. This time, make sure you hug the edges of the pattern as you trace it. Now cut your unsewn mask out. And get ready to debate whether or not you should glue or sew this mask together. Now I found that gluing instead of sewing on your seams could actually work pretty all right, as long as you use an appropriate amount of glue. There is a chance the Gorilla Glue will discolor your fabric and turn it white due to how fucking radioactive the glue is. But I prefer to sew it. Why do you? Do you want me to teach you how to sew? I'm not going to teach you how to sew. Look it up. Look it up. It's easy. Just look it up. So either glue or sew along the lines you've traced. Make sure you sew slash glue directly on or inside the line. If you sew outside of it, your lines will show up on the mask while you're wearing it. And now, you have a fully sewn mask. Now get your foam mannequin head in a plastic grocery bag. If you have a face shell, I'd recommend using that for gluing lenses instead. Make sure that if the bag is loose, tape it up with some duct tape. Now put your mask over the foam mannequin and make sure it's properly lined up. Cut the eye holes. I don't really think they need to be too precise, as you'll cut them much bigger later. Just cut the eyes where you imagine your eye holes would be. Now glue the lenses onto your mask. Let the lenses sit on your mask for a little bit and let them dry while you draw on the webbing. If you put the mask on now, it will literally burn your eyes. I'd recommend using Sharpie. I know a lot of people question it since they think it'll wipe off, but Sharpie hasn't wiped off on any of my costumes for years. And uh, I think that's it. You should have your fully completed Spider-Man mask. I hope you're proud of yourself. That wasn't too hard. That wasn't too hard to make. See? you. I, I bet you did a great old job, despite the fact I can't at all see anything you've done so far. Obviously there's a lot of refining and a lot of spots in this tutorial where I gave you the basic answer to make sure you don't have to do more complex things you wouldn't be able to do as a beginner. I might in the future make a more advanced version of this tutorial, but for now, this is your bread and butter. Hopefully from this point you'll learn to do more things with just masks and innovate outside of this tutorial. But for now, this should do you good for a couple of years. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys. I will, of course, see you all in the next video. Which, I'm, in the future, I am going to make a video about how to make your own full Spider-Man costume. So, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!